Um, so yes, thank you. We're so excited to share with everyone today this collection. We're honored to have the Walter O. Evans collections of Frederick Douglass and Douglass Family Papers, as well as other collections, which I'll mention uh, very briefly uh, later today. Um, to share these with you today and to have this material join the James Weldon Johnson Memorial Collection, one of the jewels of Beinecke Library. Um, we are honored to have um, uh, uh, Dr. Evans joining us today, I believe, and as well as Professor David Blight, who introduced us to Dr. Evans years ago. This is a picture of both of them at Dr. Evans' home in Savannah, Georgia. Um, he is a well-known collector of African-American art and of uh, historical materials with collections in the Savannah College of Art and Design and elsewhere. And we're, we're so pleased to have his collections here um, and to have uh, met him and, and formed this collaboration with him. I'm going to give a really brief rundown of the collection. Um, and before I hand it over to Rosemary to really focus in on some of the highlights of the collection. Um, the collection of Frederick Douglass and Douglass Family Papers main, uh, main core is a set of scrapbooks of uh, nine scrapbooks that were compiled by Douglass's three sons. Um, uh, Charles Lewis and Frederick Jr. over in the in the years after the Civil War predominantly and um, there's a, a picture of one of the scrapbooks here and then a picture of Charles and Lewis along with Joseph who is was Charles's son Frederick Douglass's grandson and they're very well known um, carte de visite photographs of Frederick Douglass himself with Joseph sometimes playing violin. Um, and these, that photograph, this photograph is in the collection. So the scrapbooks document Douglas's life um, in, the, in the period mainly from after the Civil War um, until his death in 1895. There is a large uh, collection of correspondence between Lewis Douglas and his wife Amelia, um, particularly during the Civil War when Lewis served in the Massachusetts 54th Regiment um, and was on the front um, in the Civil War and was writing letters to Amelia, who at that time was his fiance, later his wife. Um, there's the text of several of Douglas's addresses as, as they were recorded by the family and several manuscripts, including a corrected manuscript of Douglas's eulogy for William Lloyd Garrison, his fellow abolitionist. Scrapbooks include um, long an annotations, and this is one of the longest that you're seeing on the left of your screen here, which is titled Fre Frederick Douglas Jr. in Brief from 1842 to 1890, which give an account of um, the Douglas family's life, uh, you know, from their own perspective. Um, I know that these uh, these these accounts of their their home life were of particular importance to Professor Blight when he was preparing his biography of Douglas, which of course I should have mentioned earlier. For those of you who don't know, um, you know, is a major uh, milestone biography of Douglas that won the Pulitzer Prize last year. Um, so these accounts and um, genealogies like these, which give us the birth and death dates of someone like Rosetta. Um, Douglas's daughter, the Douglas's daughter, that you know, that kind of firm up that information um, for the historical record. Um, there's also really personal pieces like this dance card that belonged to um, Virginia Douglas, the wife of Frederick Jr. Um, not not filled in, but um, you know, dance card and graduation materials from their high school years. Um, you can really get a sense of how Douglas is portrayed in the media from the uh, the uh, newspaper clippings that. Um, that appear in these scrapbooks. You know, he was is well known to have been the most photographed uh, American of the 19th century, and is otherwise, you know, kind of the most depicted in in these um, images. Um, this material arrived here not quite a year ago in the spring in, in March of last year, right before the shutdown, and so we're really excited to be able to announce that it has been. Um, almost completely digitized. That work is expected to be done really any day now, but we can definitely promise it will be done by the end of February. Um, all of that material is available to anyone in the world on who can, has access to the World Wide Web. Um, the material itself, the physical material, is available for reader research and for teaching, uh, beginning again, you know, by the end of this month at the very latest. Um, so for anyone who right now has access to Beinecke's Reading Room, you will be able to access it. And as soon as we're able to open the reading room to more people, you will be able to access it as well. And we are planning to have an ex exhibition of the material um, in the coming years. 
I just wanted to mention before I hand it over to Rosemary that we have two other collections that were put together by Dr. Evans. One is an extraordinary collection of James Baldwin letters um, and a manuscript of his novel, Another Country. Um, that, that group was acquired in 2014. The letters are digitized and they're available in Bandicoot's digital library. If you are not using a Yale VPN connection, you can request a PDF easily of the letters um, by emailing us. Um, and also this collection of Ollie Harrington artwork, which is about 200 drawings from the editorial cartoonist Ollie Harrington, who um, is, is best known for his editorial cartoons that were done for the, the Pittsburgh Courier of Black Weekly. Um, he's an alum of the Yale School of Art and just really incisive satirist, really brilliant and often devastating. A lot of his editorial cartoons feature children, um, children living in poverty, really uh, like just uh, arresting and heartbreaking work and brilliant. Um, and so we're really thrilled to have those as well. Um, always happy to answer anyone's questions. If you'd like to email me about the collections here and I'm gonna hand it over to Rosemary to talk about processing and highlights. Right, let me see here. There we go. Okay, hi everybody. Uh, I'm Rosemary Davis. I'm the accessioning archivist uh, for the Beinecke and I'm really so delighted to be here today sharing Dr. Evans' extraordinary collection of Douglas materials. It's been such an honor to work with the collection. So basically what I'm going to try to do here is kind of layer on to what Melissa said. I'm gonna get into a little bit, a tiny bit of the nitty gritty behind what it takes in order to make this stuff available to everyone. Um, and then also show you a few of the highlights that I particularly liked. Um, um, I thought starting with this image was kind of particularly appropriate. It's a photograph taken of an unveiling of a Frederick Douglass monument. And if you look at the image, you can see in every single window in that building, there are just people lining the, uh, you know, lining every bit of available space in order to see this. Um, and so it's really wonderful to just kind of see uh, the enthusiasm and just the excitement about even just, you know, a statue about Douglas after the fact. Um, so here is a photograph of the actual monument itself. And I kind of, <laughs> you know, I wanted to include this picture because it also includes a tiny cameo from me. Uh, so this picture was actually taken in Savannah when I was at Dr. Evans' house. Uh, you can see his, his famed dining room table in the background where so many researchers have used these materials before they came to the library here. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about what an accession archivist does and kind of, uh, you know, the, the nuts and bolts of how we make collections like this available to everybody. So an accessioning archivist does a lot of things. Uh, we help assess archival collections to understand what kind of care they'll need. We help mat uh, collection material get to the library safely, so physically. So sometimes that involves packing things up or helping make arrangements or helping make sure that people know where to drive their truck so they can unload it. Uh, we stabilize everything once it arrives. So that means putting it in new boxes and folders and making sure that it's going to be able to safely uh, be kept for as long as we can keep it. Uh, the next kind of thing is intellectual analysis of what's in the collection. So we figure out what kind of organization exists or if there isn't a kind of an overriding organizational structure. And so we kind of have to figure out what would work for researchers. And we try to tease that out so that people can figure out how to navigate through these things freely. Uh, and then there's the description of everything. We have to describe what's in there so other people can find it. And constantly throughout this entire process, we're having to collaborate with colleagues to provide access on all different fronts, uh, you know, talk to donors, talk to, you know, booksellers, uh, talk to other people uh, at other libraries. Uh, it takes kind of a full court press of people doing their most to make sure that you can simply Google Frederick Douglass papers and this will come up. So you take a table full of photographs like this and you get something that's a helpful list like this. You can kind of see it broken down. It has all the contextual information that we can gather from it, including dates, uh, you know, identifying people in the photographs, uh, you know, where the photograph was taken. And we kind of group these things so that they're easy for everybody to find. 
So I want to kind of go through the three series that the materials are kind of grouped into. Uh, the first one is the Frederick Douglass papers. So this is predominantly letters to and from Frederick Douglass. Uh, we also have handwritten and typed versions of his writings, as Melissa said. We have invitations to events. We have an ad that he was depicted in. And uh, this right here is a handwritten version of the eulogy that Melissa mentioned uh, to William Lloyd Garrison. The second series is the Douglas Family Papers. And I think this is just such an incredible jewel in the collection. Um, it has clippings, writings, and correspondence between members of the Douglas family. Uh, that extensive correspondence between Lewis and his wife, which is such a wonderful insight into their relationship. Uh, we also have um, correspondence with her family and friends. So you really get a snapshot of her life as a member of the family. Uh, and then there are photographs of Douglas family members. Uh, this is a photograph of Charles Douglas in his military uniform that I think is particularly stately. Uh, and there are also published versions of Frederick Douglass's writings, which I think is a really wonderful way to see how his ideas and writings were disseminated to the public, uh, how they made uh, these things available for wider uh, consumption if you couldn't make it to a rally or if you weren't part of a political event um, or if you were in a remote area, you could still maybe get your hands on a pamphlet of, of his words and learn from that. And then the third section, and, and Melissa talked about this a little bit, is just this absolute treasure trove of clippings and ephemera and annotations that comprise these scrapbooks. Uh, they're such a, just a wonderful kind of compilation of documentation about Frederick Douglass's life, his impact, you know, kind of the ripple effect of his influence, uh, not only within his lifetime, but within the lifetime of his children. Uh, and you also get to see what they were doing with their lives through these clippings, through just the notes and things that are pasted into the scrapbooks. It's, it's truly, truly tremendous. So I wanted to show just a couple of things that I really, really liked. Uh, so this first one is an invitation to deliver a speech in Stamford, Connecticut. And I know the writing is really small, so I transcribed the first very wordy paragraph and I'll read it to you. Uh, Dear sir, recognizing the conspicuous position which for nearly half a century you have sustained towards questions of great interest and moment, to all the citizens of this republic, the courage, zeal, and unswerving devotion which has characterized your discussion of these questions during periods of national excitement and peril, and desiring again to hear the voice which has so often been raised in behalf of freedom, union, and peace, we respectfully and cordially invite you to deliver a public lecture in this place at such time and upon such topic as you may designate. Um, I love how formal this is. I love how just you can tell that they just want him to come and talk about anything. Um, and my favorite thing is that if you flip it over, you can actually see that there are over 70 signatures on the other side of this letter. It's just crammed full. Everybody had to get their name in there. They really wanted him to come to Stanford, Connecticut. Um, I think it's just such a nice, uh, view into the way that people approached him and approached his ideas and were just kind of clamoring to have that engagement with him and to learn from him. Uh, so I really love this. Uh, and then the last couple of things I wanted to show are kind of more of a personal aspect of his life. So the letter that's on screen right now is a letter from Frederick Douglass's grandson, Haley. And here I have it transcribed. Uh, I received the flute you kindly sent me last evening. I can play a little on it now, but I think I'll be able to play much better. I am more thankful, more than thankful to you for it, your affectionate grandson, Haley George Douglas. And then a few days later, Frederick Douglas sends his return, uh, and we have it here. My dear Haley Douglas, so formal, your letter of thanks for the flute I had the pleasure to give you was duly received by me this morning. Mrs. Douglas and I both agreed that your letter was a nice one. Go on, my dear boy. You are a boy now, but you will be a man someday, and I hope a wise and good man. Your affectionate grandfather, Frederick Douglas. And I just wanted to close on this picture of Haley Douglas. Uh, this was taken a couple of years later. He's sitting in a boat on Highland Beach, Maryland. And I really think that just one of the true, true beautiful strengths of having all these collection materials in one place is being able to come at Douglas's life and work from so many directions to see it through not only the eyes of, of him, you know, as he's annotating his own writings and going back and responding to people, um, but also um, through the eyes of his children, through the eyes of his family to see the ways that they tried to preserve 
his uh, legacy through through their own documentary and efforts. Uh, and I think that's just really such a nice way to go. Um, and this last little picture is just a few of the many uh, published versions of his speeches that are in the collection. So I'll go ahead and hand it over to Rebecca now so she can talk more about the digital library because the reason you were able to see all these incredible images is because of the work that she and her staff put in to, uh, you know, to doing that. So there we go. Rebecca, you're muted. <laughs> Well, I'm going to start over. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the our new digital collections platform, which is actually only about two weeks old. So this is really its public debut. Um, but before that, I'm going to talk a little bit about the digitization process, because this was actually um, a really unique collaboration um, between um, Melissa, Rosemary, and I to and my staff to digitize a collection that it was also in the process of being um, described um, and cataloged by Rosemary. Um, usually the way um, uh, the Beinecke workflows work is, is that a, a collection is um, acquired by um, a, a curator and then is cataloged or um, processed by an archivist or a cataloger, depending on what type of what type of collection it is. Um, and then only after it's been um, fully cataloged does it actually come to the digital services unit for digitization. Um, we also do not obviously um, digitize every new acquisition because we do not have um, the resources for that. Um, but because this is such an exceptional and such an important um, acquisition for the Beinecke, it was really important um, to us, um, the three of us, but also to the Beinecke as an institution that we um, get this digitized and out and available publicly and openly um, to everyone as quickly as possible. So we really um, started this process um, over the summer to figure out how can we um have the digitization and the description of the collection proceed at the same time in the way in a way to make this available as quickly as possible and i'm really happy to say that i think this col collaboration was really successful um and that it um really is a model that maybe we can think about using um in the future for other um equally important acquisitions. Um, but um, this was all also complicated by the fact that we did switch to a new um, digital collections platform two weeks ago. Um, so while about two thirds of the collection is in this new platform, um, we are still in the process of ingesting um, the final third. We hope to have that in, as Melissa said, um, by the end of the month um, at the latest. Um, hopefully it will be sooner than that. Um, so what you'll see is only a portion um, today, but um, the rest should be coming soon. Um, and I also would like very much to thank my staff in the digital services unit, the metadata catalogers and the photographers who, you know, did the actual labor that produces the images and the data that you're seeing in the system. Um, you know, I just, I just manage. <laughs> um, so um, to start with that, this is the new um, homepage for the digital collection site. Um, Right now, this site only has um, the Beinecke's digital content, but over the coming um, year plus, it will expand to include um, all of the Yale Library's um, digital collections. Um, so um, you can see here, there are some highlights that we've picked out from um, the Beinecke's um, holdings, but I'm actually just going to start right here with um, a call number search, which you all probably don't know the call number, but it's JWJ um, MSS 240. And that's probably the fastest way to bring up all of the results for the collection. And so you can just search right here. And that will bring you through to um, to this page, which is sort of like the main user interface for the, in the new um, system. Um, so you can see here um, that here is our search field. There's also an advanced search feature, which I'm not going to use today, but feel free to explore if you want to have more fine grained um, searches. Um, there's also a number of um, facets that you can limit um, your searches on um, or use to just to browse. You don't actually have to search anything, um, including um, one that I think is really um, helpful is this um, access um, facet. And so here you'll see if um, digital collections materials is open to the public or if it's limited to the Yale community only um, due to copyright and sometimes other contractual obligations we have 
Um, we do sometimes have to restrict um, uh, material to the Yale community only, but um, as you can see, um, all of the Douglas material that we've acquired is open to the public. Um, so right now there's 74 objects um, and you can search, or you can browse either um, in this sort of um, index card view with a thumbnail, or you could browse um, just um, by um, images. Um, and um, you can see here that there's, um, here's sort of a preview of what's in there. Um, this, for example, is the image um, that Rosemary used. Um, and uh, you can really, one of the great things about this new platform is, is that you can really do a very deep zoom. Um, so you can see here, um, you can actually like make out, um, it looks like somebody there is actually like holding a, a baby or something out the window to look down at the crowd. Um, so this is a new feature that of the new um, platform that I think is really exciting. And I will also um, show you um, a newspaper where it also is really um, great. Um, but there's also some other new features. Um, so here is a scrapbook. Um, that you can see um, there's the description for the object is down here. Um, you can um, click on all of these blue um, subject headings in the call number to bring up uh, to execute a search on that um, on that term. So if you click on this one, it will bring up um, you know other material that's related to Frederick Douglass that's not necessarily in this collection. Um, but going back, um, so one of the things that you can do is, again, you can zoom in and out in this viewer. You also have these thumbnails. If for those of you who were um, familiar with um, the previous digital library, the thumbnails were sort of underneath the image. Um, but the only way to sort of advance the image viewer then was to um, click on a thumbnail. But here you can also advance just by clicking an arrow. So you can go through an object here um, like this. Um, the zoom is here. You can also um, rotate the images in case, um, you know, maybe there was a note that was written this way and you want to be able to read that. So you can do a full 360. Um, you can also, um, if you look at this, you can also go into a thumbnail only view so that you can see the thumbnails for the whole, um, for the whole object. Um, this is quite a large object. So Unfortunately, it's taking a lot of load, but if you see, you can also then click and it will take you straight to that image. Um, uh, another feature is that you can um, download um, JPEGs, both a smaller resolution one or a full resolution one from this download button. And you can also download um, a PDF of the object, um, which may take a few minutes, um, seconds to load um, as they are quite large, especially for the scrapbooks, which are, um, you know, 300 plus images each. Um, it may take a while to download, but you can see that it is working here. Um, and um, you can see here, there's a, so this is a PDF um, with a full page um, image and the caption um, as well as a cover sheet so that you can get back to the object in the DL and, and know how to cite it if you're interested in doing that. Um, and to show you um, how this works with a larger image, you can see here, this is um, Frederick Douglass's paper. Um, and you can see that right now um, the newsprint is so small that it is illegible. But if you zoom in, you can read it um, quite nicely actually. Um, so uh, we are very excited about having these new um, features or improved features in the digital library. Um, and um, for those who are interested, we also now have IIIF manifests for everything. Um, if that is something um, that um, you're interested in, um, feel free to use those. Um, and that is a very brief overview um, of our new digital collections platform. Um, and um, as I said, about two thirds of the collection is already in here. So feel free to explore that now. I think Mike's gonna share a little bit about how you can access it at the end of 
um, our presentation um, and um, check back um, by the end of the month for the rest of it.